I want to look at the word I have tied to, you are born to reign. You are what? Born to reign. Everyone listening to me anywhere in the world, put your hand in your chest and say, I am born to reign. Say, I am born for a purpose. I am born to have dominion. I am born to live and not to die. I am born to reign. I am born for dominion. I have an assignment to reign on earth, to subdue on earth, to reign like my father is reigning in heaven. I am in charge because God has put me in charge. My Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So I take charge from today. Let me hear you say amen. Now, I want to start this morning by saying the word dominion. Holy Spirit, thank you because you are in charge. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. The word dominion is ability to reign. Ability for man to reign. That is the simple word for dominion. The ability for man to reign. And I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that God did not put us on earth just to be on earth. He put us to reign. He put us to be in charge. To all of you listening to me, in case you have not started raining, after this message, get ready because you will start raining. I want to mean, when I mean the word raining, it means that there's a place where you must reign. There's a place where you must dominate. There's a place where the whole earth will know that you are alive. Hear me. It's a strategic failure for you to pass through this earth and nobody is aware that you pass through. Can I let you know that many people have passed through this earth. Nobody knew that they were here. Why many people have made a lot of impact and they have become point of reference to those who are still alive. Those who are alive cannot just but refer to them. They just keep calling their names. Calling their names, referring to them one way or the other. I want all of you to understand that God has three things in mind in this scripture that I'm going to bring out. In the scripture we read, God has three things in mind. Number one, God established his intention. He established his intention. Let us. So he established. He made us to understand, I am about to do something. So what did he do? He said, let us make man in our own image. What was he doing? He was establishing his intention uh, to, for God to create. So let us make man. Every other thing, like I said previously those days, is that, you see, when God wanted to create um, the plant, he went to the earth, he spoke to the earth, and plants came forth. He wanted to create fishes, he went to the water, he spoke to the water, and fishes sprang forth. So when it was for us, for you and I listening to me, God spoke to himself. He called a meeting of himself. He called a meeting of what we call the Godhead. And he said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness so he created an intention he made us to understand that i intended to do this and he did it number two he also made us to know that he, he made us to be like him resemblance resemblance was another thing that god established there he wanted us to be like him another thing he did again was to commit dominion into our hands ability to reign like i said he committed dominion in other words everything he created god wanted us to reign over it adam and eve were put in a garden that they never created adam and eve live in a five-star accommodation they never created how do i know it's five-star accommodation because everything they needed was in that garden there was no point where they say Adam and Eve went out somewhere to look for something. Everything God created was inside that garden of Eden. And where is Eden? Eden is God's presence. Eden is a place where God dwells, where God have a tête a tête with man. Ladies and gentlemen, God created man and put him. Let me say again. Why did I say the word dominion? Guess what? God is a spirit. And so for God himself to reign on earth, it will be very unfair of him. God is a spirit. He lives in the celestial. He lives in the spirit realm. So if God is living in the spirit realm and he came on earth to create the earth, God cannot dominate the earth because the earth was created from physical things. So if physical things, God created the earth from physical things that could be seen, that could be handled. Now, spirit cannot be handled. So what? Spirit cannot reign over the earth. 
So that's why God himself needed a man who can reign over the physical things that he created. So man is made of the spirit and of the physical. Because God himself needed to create man from the earth, which is the physical. Of course, we knew he breathed into it, which was the spirit. So man was made of the spirit and of the physical. So it would be very unfair for God himself, who is a spirit, to come and live and begin to say, okay, fine, I created this earth. Let me go to farm. Let me do this. Let me do that. He can't do that because he is a spirit. So that is why God put Adam and, Adam and Eve in the physical realm to create and to have dominion over these physical things that he created for himself. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So what did he do? In order for them to have, to be in charge of this physical thing created, Another thing he established, the Bible says he blessed them. What is the blessing there? He gave them impartation. That is what I call impartation to function. He blessed them. He blessed them. So no matter who you are, hear me again. When I mean the word them, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about me. So if God had blessed us, no matter who, has, who is causing you, he's making a mistake. Because at the opening of your Bible, you will see that, and God blessed them. Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, 28 now. Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them. And I don't know, if you are hearing me, you are part of the them. So I don't know who goes or who has gone somewhere to curse you. But the truth is that he's making a mistake. Because he can curse you in chapter 3, but chapter 1 blessed you. He can curse you in chapter 30, but chapter 1 blessed you. So it now depends on who you believe. It depends on who you believe. Because there are people right now listening to me who are living in fear because the enemy has gone to chapter 50 to bless them. I mean to insult or to curse them. So they are looking at the curse in chapter 50. They forgot about the blessing in chapter 1. At the opening of your Bible, there is a blessing. And God impacted you and I. So wherever you are, hear me, if you refuse to die, nobody will contest funeral. Nobody will gather to, to say sorry. So you have the right to believe. If you believe chapter 50, the curse, and you don't believe chapter 1 verse 28, the blessing is left for you this morning. You can never reign with a curse mentality. You can never reign with a mentality of that is being deflected. You can never reign with a mentality that says, I am just on earth, etc., etc., whatever we be, we be. That devil is a liar. Whatever we be can be changed by you if you cooperate with God. You can decide to change it. As a matter of fact, I realize a lot of things can be changed. He said, With God, all things are. <laughs> with God, all things are. But I saw this morning that there's one thing that is not possible with God. I saw this morning that one thing is not possible. Hebrews chapter 6, I believe, verse 5. He said, It is impossible for those who are falling away. So make sure you don't fall away. That's the only thing that is not possible with God. When you backslide, it's not possible with God. Those who have tasted of the glory to fall away. But with God, all things are possible. But ensure you stand and you are not a falling um, child of God. Hallelujah. You are not a backsliding child of God. Ensure you stand. So ladies and gentlemen, what did God do? After impacting them. This is very important. I'm going deeper now. After God impacted them, the next thing God did is he commissioned them for an assignment. Hallelujah. I like this this morning. God commissioned them for what? An assignment. So, wherever you are on earth, if you don't have an assignment, devil will give you assignments. If you don't have, an ass if you don't have a destination, devil will create one for you. If you don't have a goal, then you are a goat. It's only goats that don't have a goal. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I saying this morning? He gave them, he commissioned them for an assignment. Assignment number one he gave to them, which I'm going to dwell on basically, is, is, is the Bible says, he said, be fruitful. Aha. I want to look at the fruitfulness that he said. Be fruitful. Be full of fruit. Be full of fruit. Don't be short of fruit. Don't be limited with fruit. Be full of fruit. And so when God said be fruitful, what was he talking about? Number one, he talks about the fruit of the womb. The fruit of the womb. Because he said replenish the earth. In other words, be multiplying the earth. Ensure you multiply. Ensure you are there 
so that animal don't take over my creation. I mean, the things I created. So ensure you are there, be fruitful. So when God told them to be fruitful, what was he saying? God was telling them ability to, to multiply on earth. Now, get something clear. When you read your Bible later, you will realize Genesis chapter 11, the Torah of Babel, where God came down and scattered the work of man. God saw the city that man builded. And the Bible says when God saw it, that was in what uh, um, King James used, builded in um, um, Genesis chapter 11. And when God saw the city that man builded, the Bible says even God was afraid. And that's where God had to scatter man. One day I got confused. I said, why will God scatter the language of man? Because that's a confusion on earth today. You have people speaking all kinds of languages. You have the Russia, you have the Englishman, you have the this, you have the that. Then even in Nigeria, you have the Akwaibo, you have this, you have that, you have this. And you know what? I, I was made to understand that Akwaibo, you know, you know, I mean Akwaibo means uh, thief. But you know in Yoruba means fire. So you can imagine the confusion in the garden or in those days. So when, when somebody just say, you know, all you do is to slap the person and say, are you calling me a thief? But not knowing is telling you to bring fire. But I'm not going into that. What am I trying to say? Why will God do that? The basic reason is that man was trying to stop that fruitfulness on earth. They began to build a tower. They said, let them go to heaven. And don't forget, God did not say you should reign there now. He said, reign on earth. Occupy till I come. So they were building a tower out of God's will. They were going up to try to multiply there. And that's why God needed to scatter them. That was the end of the building in the tower of Babel. Because God expect man to be fruitful on earth. So, what am I saying? One of the fruitfulness is what, not my word, one, I didn't say all. One of the fruitfulness is the fruit of the womb. In Psalm 127 verse 3, he said, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. So God expects everyone to, re to re procreate. Yeah, God expects us to reprocreate and to be able to be fruitful when it comes to child bearing. That is why it is very wrong for man to marry man. It is very wrong for woman to marry woman. It is very wrong for animal for human being to marry animal because that is outside the will of God. The next one, number two, about fruitfulness is the fruit of your thoughts. The fruit of your thinking, the fruit of your thoughts. Because how do I know? I realize that the, your thoughts produce your idea. The thoughts you keep continually produce your idea. I don't have much time to do it, but Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 19 will tell us. He here say, Here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon these people. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, he said what? He said, extend the fruits, the fruit of their thoughts. Because they have not hacking unto my words. Now, I look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8 said, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Note it here. But thou shalt meditate therein, day and night. And it goes further so that you can have good success. So I see somebody having good success. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So, the fruit of your thought is important. What are you thinking of? Garbage in, garbage out. While you are seated there listening to me now, what did you think of throughout last night? What are you thinking of now? Do you know why some people are thinking of doing good? There are people thinking of doing bad. While you are thinking of going to make, uh, make money legally, there are people who are thinking of defrauding you. While you are thinking of, well, I want to keep my goods, there are people thinking of dispossessing your goods. So what is your thoughts? What are you thinking of now? What are you thinking of now? You've got to know how to rearrange yourself. <laughs> think productively. Begin to think productively. If you are a man up to marriageable age, you see yourself, you realize that you are about 40 something or 40, 45. Then you begin to think, uh, the reason why you are still 45, you are not married, is because life has not been fair to you. Now, why you are thinking, 45, you are thinking of 25 years old, get to marry. Very, very, very wrong. Life has made you to be somewhere where you are. And because why? God packaged somebody for you who can help you. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to go to this. But let us <laughs> praise God. He has packaged someone as a helpmate for you. 
and that helpmate may not have been 25 years old girl because you are still going to be teaching that one how to wear pampas we don't want to go into that praise the lord hallelujah so ladies and gentlemen i want to go a little bit deeper now the next one is the fruit of your mouth not it the fruit of your thoughts now i'm looking at the fruit of your mouth or your lips what is coming out of your mouth most people cause their destiny with their mouth you just keep hearing and talk about you know easy this one is this he confesses sickness more than healing you remember jesus christ the only time jesus confessed negative was when he said he will die which was his assignment but he did not end that he will die or he will be killed he said on the third day i will rise again so when the first happened the second also happened because he rose again so ensure that your mouth is not full of confessing negative about yourself about your nation about your church about your family let me here tell you that you listening to me your family is not the worst it's not the worst don't think that your family is the worst god put you there to make a change god put you there for an assignment you know the scripture what, what are the topic this morning is you are born to reign and so at least you can start reigning in your family before you can start reigning in society ladies and gentlemen i am looking at fruitfulness the fruit of your mouth which is the fruit of your lips proverbs chapter 18 verse 20 he said a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled ladies and gentlemen it's important that you understand that god wants you to say productive things about yourself it's a fruit it's a fruit don't use your mouth to condemn yourself don't use your mouth to condemn people around you use your mouth to create something you remember he says say to this mountain you say to the mountain you speak to it i remember a particular woman i've said it before this woman was in the church and she heard her pastor say if you shall say to this mountain be that move it shall move and this woman realized that there's a mountain in her life what was the mountain she had a small piece of land and in this piece of land there was a type of hill or it's a mini mountain behind her house that was dispossessing her of using the full plot that she had why she was thinking and meditating on what to do so she came to church and the pastor said if you shall say to this mountain so she said wow the hill behind my house i want to plant some vegetable there and i want to put a building there but so the hill behind my house right now is a mountain in my life so what do i do so you mean i can speak to this mountain so she went there every day when she closes from church she will look at the mountain or the hill and say you heal in the name of jesus be down move i cast you out i cast you out and she kept decreeing it she kept saying it after some time she began to give god thanks lord thank you because this mountain is gone thank you because this mountain is gone mountain i know you are still standing here but you are already gone she began to thank god you know sometimes you don't thank god for what you are seeing you have to thank god for what you have not seen you have to thank him because now faith is the substance of this what oh for the evidence of this not seen. you have not seen it you are thanking god if i were you i begin to thank god for my next level thank god for your promotion thank god for your lifting you may not have seen it but it's somewhere there is a double for trouble ladies and gentlemen this woman came back and she began to thank god so one day the government of that um particular country in africa they decided that they were going to tie a road i mean construct a road when they were thinking of constructing that road and they said to themselves it will not be too feasible to put a bridge in that area because they saw a big gully in between that place they were trying to construct the road a big gully and so they said to themselves how do we fill this gully they said let's build a bridge they said no we don't need a bridge there all we can just do is to fill that gully so that we can tie and uh, construct the road and they began to ask themselves somebody suggested to the government that look there's a woman somewhere around this town behind the house there is a hill so all we can do is to enter an agreement with her and excavate the hill and use it to fill the road ladies and gentlemen the government invited this woman and they asked her madam there's a hill behind your house we want that um earth. we want to excavate it so that we can use it to construct road how much can we pay ladies and gentlemen this woman said give me time she went home to consult 
and she came back and gave them a fee. Ladies and gentlemen, they gave, they gave this woman a check. While she was coming smiling with the check, excavators were going to her backyard. And caterpillars and excavators got there. They began to uproot this woman's problem because somebody paid for it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is possible for someone to pay for your problem. But you must use your mouth to create what you want. Don't confess what you are saying. Confess what you want to go through. Don't confess what you are going through. Confess what you want to go through. The devil may make you to be going through poverty now, but don't confess poverty. The devil may make you to be confessed to go through sickness now. Please don't confess sickness. Don't say this is my sickness. It's not your own. When God created you, sickness was not part of it. The devil brought it from nowhere. It can go back to sender. When you can say it, you can see it. Hallelujah. So don't forget this year, the fruit of your mouth. Number four, if you don't mind, I help you out to reign. The next one is the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22 to 23. Galatians chapter 5. When I talk about the fruit of your spirit, I'm talking about your character, your behavioral pattern. How are you behaving? Your character, the things that is part of you. Me and you know the fruit of the spirit, of course, is joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, God, uh, God goodness, faith, and on and on and on. Now, the point is, what are you manifesting? What is when we look at you, what are you manifesting? I'm talking about your character. There are people, all they exhibit is gossiping, they enjoy gossiping, they can sit down from morning to night to be gossiping. Listen to me. If you are a backbiter, you can only be at the back. You cannot be in front. You know why? You spend all your energy talking about human being when you should be talking about God. When instead of gossiping man, gossip God. When you gossip God, is what we call gospel. Hallelujah. So instead of gossiping man, gossip God. When you gossip God, is what we call gospel. Hallelujah. I like this. Yes. Don't tell your man to gossip man. Uh, this one did this one. This one did that one. You're wasting your energy. Gossip the gospel. Help to share these messages. Tell somebody about messages like this. Let someone know that Jesus Christ still reigns. It's not to condemn pastor. It's to locate your own pastor. Yes. Not to sit down and begin to, this pastor is this. This one is that. In every profession there is a fake. In every profession, there's an original. So you don't see one and conclude all. That devil and the mother-in-law is a liar. He had it cards with the father-in-law too. Praise the Lord. So the fruit of the spirit, which I call your character. Hear me now. Anointing is good, but character is better. Because if you have only anointing with that character, your anointing will soon scatter. I am telling you that. It will soon scatter. I am telling you, you need character, sir. You need character, man. You need it. If you don't eat enough manna and you enter marriage, marriage will leave you. That's the truth about it. You've got to sit down. Even if you were nowhere trained from home, train yourself. Locate a disciplined man. A man of God. Sit under the administration. Sit under him. Begin to eat all you can. I want you to understand where you are coming from is your past. And your pastor is your future. So you better understand that. So what you need to do is to sit down and begin to hear words, some word, so that you don't fall out of what God has given to you. And ladies and gentlemen, as I round this thing up, if you don't mind, you remember I started with the fruit of the womb. Hear me now. Fruit of the womb alone is not about fruitfulness. There are people who have established that and say be fruitful. So they, we have so many children they begin to name their children after different names. You hear some say, Owolabi, Omoyhefe. You hear some say, they use all kinds of things, all adjectives, different things to name children. So we will tell you, Uwakego, money, picking our money. It's not true. Child is not money. You can't sell your child. So having them so many can only make you depressed. It can make you to roll, to rain. Because I realize this is one thing that most people do. When poverty has ravaged them, they begin to fire children on earth. They begin to fire, fire so many on earth. I want you to understand, that is not all about fruitfulness. 
That is not, I know, God said be fruitful, so replenish. Just give birth to the one you can take care of. The one you can put quality on. The one you can invest on. Hear me now. If you look at Nigeria today, it's a time bomb. When you look at the Alamajeris, it's a problem for the future that nobody is addressing. A, people, a group of boys or girls, they are born and left to take care of themselves. You realize also not only in the north, in the south, in the east, in the west. What are we saying? People bring four children. They say, well, God said we should be fruitful, so let me just give birth. At the end of the day, you see yourself every year you produce. Every year you want to kill yourself. You better relax. Understand that dominion is not about having so many children. Because you can be depressed when you have them without being able to take care of them. A, 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 a son of mine, I, I was talking to him a few days ago. The wife just gave birth. I know he's listening to me now. So I began to pray. I say, your next um, 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 child, the, the next children you will give birth to are triplets. He said, Daddy, I reject that prayer. <laughs> he said, Daddy, I reject that prayer. I said, oh, boy, triplet. He said, No, sir. He said, This one that I have now, only one, I know how I am feeling. And you are praying for me for triplets, sir. No. He's a wise boy. That's why he's talking like that. There are many who will say amen to that prayer. There is nothing wrong if you say amen to the prayer, if you have ability to take care of them. If you have the ability to take care of them, there is nothing wrong. You should be celebrating such prayer. I want you to understand that dominion, look at Africa today. Look at some nations that have so many. What is happening? Problem. Problem. Dominion in the wrong way. Dominion, I mean, uh, fruitfulness in the wrong way. Having fruitfulness in corruption. System to be corrupt. System to be corrupt. We have to check these things and ask ourselves, where are we having our fruitfulness? System, latest way of, 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 of corruption. The devil is a liar. So I wanted to, to embezzle here and there, just to embezzle. I realized, someone said, hear me now. He said, when others are corrupt, to you is corruption. But when your relation enters there, it's not corruption, but connection. <laughs> when your relation is the one there, embezzling, not connection. Yeah, that one is connection. That's not corruption. May the Lord help this society. May the Lord help us. We, are, we can't but say it out. We can't but cry out. Because we travel out, we see things. We travel out. How can a nation called Nigeria not have light? After how many years of birth, not have light? I think we sorted our independence too long. I thought we asked for it too long. If we had allowed the white man to see me here, I believe that at least Nigeria would have been like South Africa today. I even much, much better. I think we asked for um, independence too early. So I, it's not my topic, but I'm a pastor. I, I still live in this society. So please permit me to say some things. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are hearing the sound of my voice from. I want you to understand that it's time for every one of us to learn to contribute our own quota. Hallelujah. So, to be fruitful is important, but please understand, don't bring children into this world you can't take care of. Don't tell me that when I bring them up, um, God will take care of them. I understand. God will take care of them, but listen to me. You, you have to understand that God is the God of plan and purpose. You must have plan. You must have destination. You must have agenda for these children. It should not be a situation where um, it's time to pay school fees. You are developing malaria. Uh, it should not be. It should not be. So I'm letting you understand. You can't reign in as much as you are bringing four children every year you can't take care of. You bring them forth. I know a lady who, who was the one. The husband was not doing too well financially. So she was the breadwinner. You know, someone who, who wins bread is called what? Breadwinner. Amen. Hallelujah. So she was the breadwinner of the family and she was doing very well. Before you know it, she got pregnant again. She got very depressed. I asked her, Madam, why are you so depressed? She said, Sir, we don't have food at home. We don't even know. I said, How about your husband? He said, My husband has not been working. I've been the one supporting. Then I said, Okay, fine. You already have about three children. You have three and you are the one supporting the home. What made you to be pregnant again? See, I don't know. Praise God. I said, You don't know. Are you another Holy Mary? Praise God. How can you tell me you don't know? You know, it was a system you and your husband planned. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about how people cannot reign. In as much as Africa is taken like that, we have to look at areas of dominion. There are areas of transportation where we can have dominion. There are areas that we can begin to think of how to have dominion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you remember Jesus Christ in Matthew 21, 
21 from verse 18 to 19, the Bible says he cursed the tree because why? He did not bear fruit. So God expects us to be fruitful. So God wants us to be fruitful. Number five, quickly, as I get, uh, do this and get off our way this morning. Number, number five is the fruit of your hands. The fruit of your hand. God expects us to what? To be productive. To do things that are productive with our hands. You can find that in Proverbs 31, 30 to verse, um, 30, verse 30 to 31 verse 30 to 31. Proverbs 31, verse 30 to. So God expects us to be fruitful with our hands. You have to be fruitful with the things you do. God expects you to do things. Not just to do things. Do it. Make sure you are succeeding in what you are doing. Put your mind in what you are doing. Love what you are doing. Do it, even if the reward is not showing forth now. Do it. Don't let, don't put money forth in everything. Don't put it forth. I know money may be part of it, but don't put it forth. Be productive and show what you are doing. You are doing it well. Because it's that thing that we announce you tomorrow. You remember David? He was a young boy in the bush. He had no anim he had no human being to preach to. He had no, no human being to sing to. The Bible says he was in the bush singing. When the spirit of the Lord is upon my life, I will dance like David danced. Where was he dancing? He was dancing in the bush. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What was he doing? He was learning because he was also a shepherd. He learned from it. He was in the bush. Guess what? He was singing. He was a man that has so much qualities. And guess what? Nobody knew about him. But he was still doing it with joy. He was succeeding. When Bear came to snatch one of the sheep, guess what? He put his life out and made sure he rescued the, the sheep. When lion came, he also slew the lion. How many of us will not run away if you have 100 sheep? Out of your 100 sheep, then you have a um, um, lion coming to take just one. You know what you do? Some people will just take the 99 away. But this young man will not because he loved what he was doing. He rescued the sheep from the, um, the lion. And years later, opportunity came for him to kill the Obonga lion. Who was that? Goliath. He had a training with beer. He had a training with lion. He didn't know there would be a Goliath tomorrow. He had a training playing instruments. One day, the king was mad. King Saul, a backsliding king, was mad. Why the spirit of madness came on him? Somebody said, let us play music so that the king can be refreshed. They said, but we don't have good musicians. He said, no. There is one young man in the bush. I have seen the son of Jesse. I have seen him skillful in music, prudent in matters. They said, please go and call him. That was the day God opened door for him in the palace. I don't know who you are. God is opening big door for you. But you must be good at what you are doing. Put your heart in what you are doing. If you are a pastor, you are whatever, put your heart in what you are doing, man. It's not just about the gratuity. It's not just about the money first. Put your heart in what you are doing. If you are a politician, put your heart in what you are doing. As a politician, ensure that you do the things you promise to do. Do the things. <laughs> like Donald Trump. Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, an American, but I remember that this man did everything he said. Everything he ever talked about was what he did. So I think some of us can begin to take load from that. Whatever, I know a lady who came one day, a politician in Africa, she passed through a very, very terrible road to a village. And when she got there, she brought out a long script and began to read from the script. I will do this for you. I will do this for you. Then I said to myself, this woman is not going to do anything. The reason is, if you don't need a script to read, if I were you, I will destroy that script. Because the bad road you pass through, it's already the script. So she was reading from the script. I knew that this one is fake. Praise God. Sometimes I suspect leaders that read from book. God will help us. I don't want to go into that. Praise the Lord. I suspect because anything you want to see, we can see there's no light. So even if it's one light, you just speak and do for us. We know at least you have done something. A person just gave us, a, what you call it, um, it gave us communication. So we have a telephone today. If every government that comes give us one one thing, we will have something to say. I don't want to go into that. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Number six. I will go to seven, then I close there. Number six. Uh, number six. 
is the fruit of the land. The fruit, I talked about the fruit of your hand, the fruit of the land. The fruit of the land has to do with your workplace, the place where you are working, the place that is feeding you, the place where make sure you work to contribute to the lifting of that place. Don't be working in a place and you are tearing the place down. Instead of working in a place and tearing it down, please leave that place. You know why? Because you are bringing yourself down. Your future is hidden in where you are. What you give now is what you will get later. One thing about some of us, anytime we make up our mind to follow, we follow you like fool. You know why? That makes us to be full of the blessing today. Don't follow like a traitor. Don't follow like a caro, a caro. Then when you leave there, say Oloshi. You don't need it. You don't need it. All you need to do is be honest. Let your yes be your yes. Let your no be your no. Anywhere you are opportune to work, please put your heart. Any amount that they pay you a salary, if you are set it as salary, please, you better be working. Don't complain. Just comply. You know why? Tomorrow is not too far. One day you may be a boss of yourself and you are going to employ people like you too who will come in and tear you down. So don't ever forget this. The fruit of the land. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 25. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 25 and Numbers 13 verse 20. Like I said, make sure you write them down. That is what I call the fruit of the land. I go to number 7 and we take time to pray. Number 7 is the fruit of your seed which is in Deuteronomy chapter 29. The fruit of your seed. Hear me now. When we talk about your seed, the seed is hidden inside the fruit. You are not permitted to eat the seed, but you are permitted to eat the fruit. Anytime you eat this tree, you eat the seed, you kill the tree. You kill the future. There are most people, all they do is they open shop. Permit me to use this word. They chop everything in the shop. Permit me to use that word. They have no direction. They have no destination as per the business they have. I had someone come to me some years back and say, Sir, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a petty trader and all and all. And he said, oh, well done. And he said, Sir, the truth is that I don't know how to calculate my tithes. Then I said, then forget about being lifted into the future. I said, the reason is, if you cannot calculate the profit you are making, then it means that the business is bigger than you. It's bigger than you. So God may need to even allow you to go down so that you can calculate it properly. So everybody should be able to know what am I doing, the fruit. So check what fruit. Don't forget this year because this is where many people miss it. They will eat the fruit. They will eat the seed. They are not sowing seed at all. They are not ready to sow seed. Look at Africa. We are talking about um, climate change, climate change. What is the problem? We cut down trees without replacing the tree. We cut down big mahoganis. We cut down uh, Hiroko trees. We cut them down. But at the end of the day, we forget that what are we doing? We are doing what we call deforest deforestation. Praise God. Because we are not no longer replenishing the forest. So today, you have all kinds of things telling against the earth. Who knows where that coronavirus came because of that? Yes, they could have been angry somewhere. They said, come, these people want to finish us. Let us also visit them. But it's going back to send in Jesus' name. Amen. So we should remember, anything God gives you, there is a seed inside. Everything God gives you, there is a seed inside. While you are eating the thing, remember the seed. Don't just think that your life is all about you and you alone. There's a percentage that must go out. Though God never gave all to man, a percentage has to go out for more to enter. If you are listening to me now, you realize why you are breathing. What are you doing? You're taking oxygen. You must bring out carbon dioxide. And that's why today, putting on the mask, everybody should. But why we do that at home, why you are sleeping, please remember to remove it. Because why? Your lungs need oxygen. It's very important. While you are at home, please remember to free your um, respiratory tract. It's important that we teach and we also teach and balance what we're saying. It's important. Ladies and gentlemen, when you eat, what do you do? You go to the toilet because you have to give something back. You have to release something back. I call that excreta also a seed. You say, Pastor, I see a seed because it goes to the earth to become manure. 
The trees will need it. Sometimes the people who excavate the sewage, they go to throw it inside the water. The fishes will eat it. At the end of the day, you will eat the fish. And that's the truth. So life is about seed. You are not permitted to lock it up. Check your life. Your life is governed by the quality of seed you sow. I'm talking to you here. I happen to have been the son of an old farmer whom I grew up in the city. And when I could not speak my language, one day they bundled me to the village. And they say, you must learn your language. Oh, very good. I got to the village. I became a local champion. I hawk up and down. So one day they carried me to the farm. It was time for them to plant yam because it was a very big yam um, um, planter or dairy about. So why we were doing this and it was time to eat. I saw where we cut the big, big yam and put in the ground. And this time we came into the hut or dairy about we were meant to eat on tiny looking yam. I was very angry being a city boy. I said, sir, what is going on here? Why did we put this small one into the earth? He said to me, what you put in the earth is what the earth brings back to you. Check your life, the quality of your seed. Check it. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. And when we talk about this seed, seed does not mean only money. You can give seed of smile. The next time you look at yourself in the mirror, what you do to the mirror is what the mirror does back to you. If you jump, the mirror jumps. Something, someone inside the mirror jumps. If you smile, someone inside the mirror smiles back at you. And some of you are looking at me. People hate me. People hate me. Go and check. You are sowing the seed of hatred. That's why people hate you. If you are wherever you are listening to the sound of my voice, don't forget, the quality of your seed determines the quality of, of, your, of your life. The seed. So check. Are you truly connected? And when you are sowing seed, please, it's also important that you locate the right soil. Because if you put your seed in the wrong soil, it's only a matter of time. You may have no harvest to come out with. Say, oh, I want to sow seed. And you go to this es express road and you dig the road there. You dig it somewhere and put something. Hey, it may spring forth, but guess what? It will not stay long. They will trample upon it. It may not even do very well because that soil is not meant for it. What am I trying to say? Locate. If you are talking about seed, who are you sowing seed to? Where is your seed going? What is the quality of your seed? Financial seed, marital seed, um, the spiritual seed, just name it. Seed goes on and on. So if you are not, I believe this message this morning should be able to help us.